and welcome to another episode of War Infinite Panels. Today, everything is always sunny in Tech of Comics. My co-editor in chief, Joel Strand. Uh, yes, yes. You'll you'll wonder why I'm so happy. Yeah, he is ecstatic about many things, and uh, this was a crazy you know, month and a half. What is it? Three weeks. Hence, news bombs after one after another another. But we're going to start off with the greatest movie that came out this weekend, uh, Thor. I'm sorry, that was last weekend. <laughs> so uh, Jules and I had a chance to see both Thor and Justice League. Let's break yeah, it down. Just, yeah, just plain and simple, uh, Thor, fun, lots of fun. Justice League, uh, see it once, and, you know, I wouldn't recommend seeing it again. I, yeah. Both if, the thing is that I feel like I see a lot of people trying to like, oh man, I saw Justice League is a great movie. I'm like, no, see Thor and Justice League. They both came out really you'll see they like night and day. And not to say, oh, this is better than the other. I mean, in some aspects. I feel like Justice League had you can notice the the editation and different and, and different direction from uh jo- Josh Whedon and Snyder when he left. It's like you, you can notice like it's like two different movies. <laughs> when you watch it, this is what it's like. It's it's like it, I almost feel bad about you know we had a huge conversation about Josh Sweden's you know supposed sexism and poss- you know it, but I almost feel bad because if it wasn't for him, Justice League would have been terrible. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. But my thing, my thing about Josh in that aspect of you know, sexism and whatnot. This is me being super honest about it, about you with it, is that it's it's hard to separate it's separate the man from the work. I mean, let's be dull, dull, but do I agree that he potentially could be a terrible human? Yes, but without him, without him, we wouldn't have mainstream successful female characters. Because I'm pretty sure, Jules, you you're cool with me and everything, but I highly doubt that you read Strangers in Paradise. At least, have you, I don't think you read that comic book yet. Rangers in Paradise, uh, no, Love not and yet. Rockets. Yes. Okay, so yeah, there's a there's a couple of like into like those are like strong female character centric books, and I'm not sure everyone read them. I, I love I love Terry Moore to death. I wish everyone read Strangers in Paradise and his other works, but I'm, I don't think everyone has. I feel the same for, uh, you know, the Hernandez brothers with Love and Rockets. So. It's like Josh Whedon was like this, I mean, what he was the center of all those strong female characters he made, and the fact that he is a terrible human being, sexist pig, whatever, whatever. It's just like it's hard to separate that. I think that's trouble for a lot of people. But without I mean, him, we also wouldn't have a good Justice League movie. I mean, it's it's not like it's not like he's it's not like uh, I mean, it's not as hard as separate. It's. It's not as easy to hate on him, both in his work and personally, like how you would, let's say, Frank Miller or Zack Snyder. Yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, there it's very easy to hate them. Oh, because, beyond. Oh, Zack Snyder, why would you even suggest that Batman should be raped in his own movie? Or say that you know more than comics and the fans, and that's the hugest insult to anyone of anything at any time. And people wonder why we don't like this man. But with with Joss Sweden, at the very least, you can tell his work is very genuine. Like, it's... I mean, come on. This is the guy that gave us Buffy. This is the guy that made comic books. Admittedly, he, he made comic books. He was one of the contributing factors as to why comic books are mainstream now. Exactly. So, in a way... Yeah, I really, I almost feel bad about talking about him last time, but at, and you know, I'm kind of thankful because if if he didn't, you know, finish up the work. Oh, and by the way, I he was kind of credited at the beginning. Yes, but he was. He, yeah, they did. They credited him during a, a screenplay. I thought they didn't, but they did. They got it through at the end. Yay! Our complaining worked. Yeah, complaining worked. That's right, guys. Thanks. The more we complain, the more we things change. But yeah. Justice League as a movie has has some several have several deep flaws, and the, the flaws in the movie is that you can notice that it's like two different people trying to drive to see the movie, and there's also some characterizations I was not a fan of. You, 
I, I love um, Bar Barry Allen, even though I felt that should have been Wally, just because he acted whatever. The boy man at the Flash, he, they treated him as a super duper joke. I mean, it was it was a limit to being a joke. Like, come on, man. It's like I expect this from Wally, but Barry. It's like Ex when was Barry Sheldon? Exactly, exactly. That I don't know what being a character. I mean, the surprising enough, I do agree that the that the writing and direction production did a great job of making Aquaman not lame. That was a real good to them. They even made jokes about it. Oh yeah, I mean, even though I still. Let's see. I, I don't know. Like, I still, I'm okay with the whole grizzled era Aquaman, even though he should have had, even though he should have had the hook. Oh, you uh, want to you want to go full Peter? I think it was Peter David's run that he had the hook. Yeah, the hook hand. Yes, yes. Pirate, pirate man. I called him at one point. But this this guy seemed like, what if what if Michael Bay wanted to make a brawny man the right way? Yeah, I felt like. Uh... Jason Momoa did a good job playing Aquaman. He was both fun and serious. I think he was. I think like I said, the writing direction was at crossroads. Like clearly, someone wanted to make him fun, and another guy wanted to be super serious. And he wasn't flushed out fully because it's like, oh hey, I had this conversation with this girl. It was clearly Mira. It's like, okay, I guess I did the right thing now. I'm like, mm -hmm. and I think my biggest complaint with the movie. Well, obviously, these <laughs> there's going to be some complaints about the movie. Um. I got bored during the first half because Oh yes. Yeah, that that that, that intro made no sense. Was, a lot of the a lot of the film suffered from as I called it Superman jerk off syndrome. Like it was just so much jerk offs like come on, I get it, he's dead, stop rubbing my face, I get it. Let 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 this movie be like like there's there's a scene in the movie where Superman somehow comes back and he just like beats the crap out of everybody. I'm like, come on, really? Like, come on. And the way But then, but then again, yeah, we're already getting to spoilers. Although you not spoil. I mean, there's a scene where he he'll come back somehow and explain how that happens, but he'll somehow come back. And he beats the crap out of everybody, and it, it's kind of stupid because the, the like, okay, I understand you can kind of go toe to toe with Aquaman, go toe to toe Wonder Woman, but you beat Flash, the power of the Speed Force. Isn't he faster than you? Screw this. Well, in a way, it wasn't fast as like he could really catch up to him, but. Fast enough to the point where, oh gosh, he's trying to hit me. Oh gosh, he's trying to hit me. Oh yeah, and that, yeah, that, that was pretty much like Aquaman's. Oh wait, what I'm gonna do? Aquaman's um, flat. Oh wow, what I'm gonna do? I'm like, it, it was like you called it Sheldon. That, it, that was just a gripe for me because it's like I, I like the Flash and I like the fact you made him funny. It was kind of nice, but you should just made it Wally. Then I felt more okay with it because again, you also should just use Wally because. Nothing personal. You have Barry in the TV shows, and a lot of fans who watch the TV show like I expect a similar characterization, but it wasn't there. Yeah, and I guess uh, the point of Justice League is that really Joss Whedon should have directed this. I say this in the description of my vlog, and y yeah, Joss Whedon really should have directed this all you, you on, could... all on his own. Yeah, I felt like he had a good idea. He made it. I could tell the parts of lighthearted and fun with him. I, like I said, I feel like uh, I'm sorry. I, I I told my friends on Facebook like, oh, this movie's a solid eight. Nah, this movie's a five because it's like two. It's like two different movies trying two different people trying to compete with each other. And I feel like Zack Snyder should not be directing any more DC movies. This is his third one, and this is this is slightly above Batman v Superman, but below Wonder Woman. And look how Wonder Woman was directed. It's a completely different DC experience compared to the other four movies. If you can. I mean, you can tell which parts are Zack Snyder. That's like, oh, more pontificating and navel gazing and speeches about teamwork and hope and humanity and yeah, it's like we're not there yet, bro. We're not there yet. We can't do this on our own. We need to we be need together. To... Can we just have a superhero movie? Just, just, just a freaking superhero movie, and then and... Joss Whedon gave it to us. Yeah. There were things it, in here that you know that Zack would never do. Yeah. It's just, and that's the way I feel. Yeah. And, that, and, and that's that just goes in a nutshell. When Cyborg expresses... Like, there's one moment in the movie where Cyborg actually expresses emotion, and it's like, okay, what did you do with the Cyborg of this movie? Because the Cyborg of this movie is deadpan. Exactly. 
I did that like uh, the actor played Cyber was amazing though. He he was like low key top tier. Yeah, but as Cyborg, come on, man. Like, who is this guy? Who is this brooding guy? I mean, I know he was just after an accident, but come on. And you know that Booyah was forced. Exactly. Booyah. It sounded so deadpan. Nothing again. Like I said, it must have been the way. It, like I said, it's, like I said if, the thing with Cyborg is that, like I said, everyone has an opinion of him because we all grew up much the Italians, et cetera, et cetera. He... I understand, like, him being in constant duelism, feeling he's a monster more than a man. He looks super cool in that hoodie, but he just wasn't fun. And booyah, that the way he said it, it was like booyah, like 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 he was cool, like not reading from font. He was cool, like I'm having a sandwich. Booyah. <laughs> we could have replaced him with just a computer. Well, actually, yeah, we could. We could have replaced him with a computer. But anyway, we're kind of we're kind of going off the rails here. What, Thor, okay, let's just make Thor very simple. Thor is just very fun. Thor is good from the gate up, and compared to uh, Justice League, it was a team movie. Like you, you, every everyone played a role, even when you know he meets Loki and he gets this person, he meets this hot chick, he meets Banner. Everything happens like it should. I I think and... I think the the way to describe like a a team movie natural should it. And I felt like Justice League, you could sense when watching in directions, did not happen. At least Thor knew what it wanted to be. Exactly. Uh, it wanted to be Chris Hemsworth, showing everyone I am very good looking with short hair and long hair. And, al- <laughs> and also to intro- to actually have... like, I, Even though, yes, Marvel is owned by Disney, but... For the fran- for for the for the MCU to actually have its first actual Disney villain, because Hela is basically a Disney villain. Uh I mean she's part of Thor mythos. I mean she's the queen of hell. So just saying. And and also the actress that plays her, I forgot her name. Also, Kate played... Blanchett. Yeah. Yeah, she played uh, Cinderella, uh, uh, Cinderella's Lady Tremaine in the recent movie. Yeah, she did. And so, just the way she moves, the way she talks, just her it was dialogue, it was magnificent. It was she. She really is the Disney villain of this of this of this universe. I mean, I'm sorry, just she's an evil it, queen. Yeah, she was fantastic. Yeah, she. There's no way to get around. She's fantastic. So yeah, now going on to from the good stuff to the more more sticky stuff. So yeah. on to. Really big changes over at DC and Marvel, and why I'm so happy. <laughs> well, another reason why I'm so happy. Yeah. Um, I guess one reason to be uh, happy about is the... It just... How, how to put this? Uh, DC finally learned that, you know, it's bad to let your editors, who have been working for 15 years with rumors of harassment, touch people. Just saying. Just bad. It's just bad business. Yeah, I mean, it's not like uh, DC has been losing female writers for years now, even though many of them have stated that I don't want to be around this guy because he's going to harass me. Right, I'm exactly. Like, and it's just disgusting. And the thing is, like, oh man, like, like, and the thing is that it was rumors of this for years. People were saying it. Um, I, I they, they try to contain it by moving to different departments, but he just couldn't. The, look, Eddie is a serial toucher. I, I, I'm i trying to say this is the best way I can say it. It's joking against it. He's a serial there's toucher. No he just can't help way. himself. Just, there's no other way to say it. Like, the the man... How, how do... We, the only reason... The only two th- uh, theories I could, you know, speculate on, you know, as to why this was... This went unaddressed for so long is... The wor- one of the first one is the f- the worst kind, where it's like, oh, these women are just being so thin skinned. That was like one of the things. I, I think the problem was is that I think this is the first towards the end of the year. I think it's finally happening that what women, regardless of you know spectrum, race, or what gender gender I identify with, it's finally happening that they're. It's finally no longer oh, there has to be more to the story. Where I believe you, I got this. Yeah, you can't be lying, brother. And Eddie has been stacking these points for years. It's like, oh, we're just one woman. Then it became 10. Then it became 20. Then it became big name women. Then it became uh, big name uh, big name writers. And then it became 
uh, you know, just everyone's like, yo, this guy's a problem. DC's like, all right, you're done. Get out of here. It even and like, even expanded to the DC Cinema Universe. I think it was the, the director of Wonder Woman, Brent, uh, Brent something. You know what I'm talking about, right? The Wonder Woman yeah, director. Yeah, and she guy. didn't want, and she didn't want to be anywhere near him either. Exactly. And she, I guess Brent. I forgot his last name, but it was so cool because the moment she says, "I'm not working with him. I will not do this movie." They should have fired him because I believe you. It doesn't. Like, oh, she's lying. Look, look, he has made us so much money that why would what in her name will make her say this? Oh, I'm lying. That I can't work with. Most people say, I just can't work with them. Understandable, they have work with them. No, I won't work if he's on the movie. Done. He's fired. We need you because your movie is the best DC movie. Because finally they're thinking outside of their boys club mentality, which right. DC has had for years. Oh, God. Yeah, D- and, and the thing is, DC is not only a boys club, it's just old, the old man boys club. And with it being, the thing is, to transition that, he has picked up, uh, has signed a multi-deal. Everyone's, you guys may be aware, signed Brian Michael Bendis, you know, Bendis to DC. And every, some people are excited for it, some people aren't. I'm a little 50-50 on it because, uh, to be polite, uh, Bendis hasn't done anything amazing in, in, from a comic book reader so since he left the Avengers. His uh, Daredevil's run was great in Avengers, but I don't know what he's going to do at DC that can save him. I do not believe that he's going to take over Batman. That's not happening with Tom King. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do there. So I don't have much faith. I think it's okay. But again, I feel that Ben is at the end of the somewhat career rope. So he's at DC, Boys Club. Like, what? I'm, well, I'm kind of interested. Like, I, I, I've read some of his Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, but. Ooh, that was rough for me. It's only yeah, Daniel. It was rough. But I almost want to see what he'll do. Like, if I could place him anywhere. Where would you place let's him? See what, w- let's see what he would do with Titans. Let's see what he's going to do with Damon, uh, Damien. Believe it or not, I kind of have an idea for him. I think it would be great if you put him on a book that no one's done for a while. Like, uh, you know, put him on Constantine. Put him on, if you're going to get rid of Scott Lobel, maybe get rid of him on Red on the Outlaws. If you, if you decide to get rid of uh, Scott Lobel, put him. Some people suggest they'll put him on Batgirl. I'm like, no, we got Hope no, Larson no, no. for that reason. Exactly. Oh, Batgirl is fine though. Just no, no. Exactly. And I personally think that you could put him on something like, like believe it or not, put him on Suicide Squad. I I, I personally think that'd be a good idea because Suicide Squad yeah. not really, yeah. Either but Suicide I don't... Squad or Red Hood and the Outlaws. Yeah, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Maybe even Nightwing because I uh, I know that Tim Seeley is gonna his run's gonna end soon, and I'm super super nervous. That Sam Humphries will take over, and I'm like, don't let him do that, please. I, I'm super nervous. So it's like, if Bendis took over, that I'd be okay. But I'm pretty fifty fifty on Bendis being. A, I don't think he'll get a big name book. There's no way he's gonna come up and just take Masia Gleason. That's not happening. It's not gonna get Batman. I feel so sad for Marvel right now. They had to deal with with Eddie, and then DC is getting the blessing of Bendis. Actually, uh, DC had to deal with Eddie. Marvel has nothing to do with Eddie. Eddie is gone. I mean, Goodbye. uh, I mean, oh yeah. For, why am I getting these things? DC has to deal with Eddie and get and, Bendis and get Bendis at the same time. I, f- oh yeah. F- why am I getting this mixed up? Uh, uh, I guess I'm just still overjoyed that Eddie is gone. Just yeah, gone. I mean, oh yeah, a my decade plus theory. of complaints. It's it, it. He had to get. I'm sorry. I'm I'm happy. I don't my know. Second, we'll just... my, my... My second theory was that, you know, it's a similar theory as to how some of these men can get, like, some of these guys can just get, like, work is nepotism. It's like, w- was he friends with the Dio and Lee for the longest time that... No, he was he before just... D. He was before when, I think he was before Didio became up. I think he was, uh, he was just, editor has been around for about, i say, early 2000s. So he's been around during the golden era of Chef John's. He was around during when Mark Raid, I think when Mark Raid may have written JLA Grant Morrison, but he was around that era when things were great, DC, and people yeah. overlooked, may have overlooked or the, the accusations because, hey, he was an editor during the good time. So we got to keep him payroll. He, he could get talent. He knows that books. He has connections, etc. but it's not worth it anymore. His connections ain't building much. He has changed the entire editorial. They have, they have some new writers that picked up, like, you know, Hope Larson. They got, you know, Tim Seeley. They got 
they got the Bensons who are writing Birds of Prey, I believe. So it's like, we don't need you anymore. You're, you're not getting any bodies. And this only got worse at, uh, post New 52. And yeah, another, again, one of the criticisms of the New 52 was, you know, the treatment of women employees or women in comics mixed with the boys club mentality at the time. So yeah, you could, you could tell that Eddie kind of, we have no idea if Eddie actually went wilder than normal. Chances are he did. Basically, yeah. And so Bendis is apparently their only counterbalance to this whole mess. Right. And even then, I'm 50-50 on him because I feel like he is already doing well, in my opinion. Pretty Bendis. I mean, you got uh, next year we're going to have the Terrifics done by uh, Terrifics done by Jeff Lemire, and Jeff Lemire is just smashing it. He's like, if not one of the best, the top five comic book writers in the industry right now. Oh yeah, I mean, even if you, let's see, I did he work on Convergence for a bit? No, he's been on he's been on a lot of things. I don't think he was on Convergence. He was, I mean, he was at DC. He was there. Uh, he wrote uh, he wrote the Green Animal Arrow. Man. Yes, you may agree. And then the uh, well, we're getting off topic here, but yeah, Eddie is gone. Finally, finally, we yeah. This, we put an end to this man and Bendis. Just, just try not to be too weird. You no. Know? Yeah, I just... think I personally think that um, as you mentioned earlier, put him on the Titans is a bad idea because he's not good at writing kids from his X Men run. Yeah, like let's put him on Red Hood and the Outlaws. Yeah, something or you know a no name. Uh, IP never came back, like Suicide Squad, Outlaws, maybe Night, something, something somewhat low scale and urban he can do because, you know, or, or, you know, since I, I, this, this is an idea too, it's not for me, Brian Hitch is not really a good writer. If you put Brian Hitch back on pencils and Bendis writing, the you know, writing J, uh, Justice League, it'll just be like his Avengers run all over again. It'd be cool. I think people would like that or give people confidence. Yeah, from what I can tell, it's like the Justice League books aren't doing as well as, as let's say the other other books in uh, the con- in in the Rebirth line. It's like out of all the comics that I, I I've been looking through, like Justice League didn't really do that well. No, it's it's the same thing with uh, not to get off topic. Same thing with Green Lantern. I think those two those book those lines may be the weaker lines because. I read the first trade of uh, Justice League of America, the Batman team, and I, I'm not interested in reading the next trade, the next like six issues. I'm like, but yeah, it's definitely it. And speaking but, of yeah. uh, speaking of changes towards lines, Marvel yeah. has got a new editor in chief. As of last week, uh, Alex Alonzo was terminated immediately, and we'll get CB uh, Belusky. Yeah, sorry, Alonzo. Um... Again, we love the fact that you were pushing diversity, and that's great. But your decisions, you know, uh, uh, it's just um, you know, the comics eating each other alive, you know, in terms of the sales. cannibalism, yeah. But... Yeah, and overpublishing, and, you know... Yeah, but it's... It's, they're good ideas. It's just... It, it's, like, it's like being in a candy store... But none of this is organized. Like it's all good stuff. But where am yeah. I gonna find the gummy worms? Where, 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 where are my, uh, where are my skittles? Where, where the heck it, is everything? Exactly. And the thing to me is that, uh, is people, some people would be, you know, in, in cheering about Lance might leave it. Like some, uh, some people are like, oh no, Marvel Comics going back the way it was. People forget that alonzo has been there since 2011, I believe. So he had a good six, maybe arguably seven year tenure there. And with him, we had Marvel now. We had Hickman. We had Rick Remender. We had Matt Fraction because of him. And we had a lot of good runs. Uh, so I'm very happy that, you know, his tenure is over. It was short. I, I was hoping it lasts longer. And I hope for the best for him in the future. I, he inspired a lot Even. of people to work in the industry. And also C.B. Belusky. Man, that's actually kind of... Huh. C. C double B. There. C double B's. Double B! <laughs> So yeah, it's just I, I don't know much about him other than the fact that he he's an artist and penciler and that he's been in the industry for a while and 
Yeah, he's been in the industry it. for about two plus decades. He's he's been he's he's a Marvel veteran. He he recently worked at the brand side, so he's in brand management. He's been at overseas in Marvel Asia, I believe. Uh, he he's well known in the industry. Uh, he helped Charles Soul work in the industry, much oh, how nice. like Jason Aaron, much how like uh, uh, Alonzo brought Jason Aaron to Marvel. So you know, it's, it's always cool like that show. So some people are excited about it. I am. I'm a little fearful because I don't. As you, as we talked about last episode, uh, there have been some PR problems with Marvel, and yeah. I wonder how that affect the diversity line. Like, will Belusky still uh, push diversity? Will he still um, spearhead some Alonzo ideas or cut some back? I personally think I hope he cuts some back because the cannibalism is happening again. Because if you are an X Men reader like myself, you notice there's way too many X Men teams. You have we having gold, we have blue, and soon to come we have red. And astonishing X Men. Way why too many X Men teams. Too many. What? Why? Yeah. Do, Red. What is? What is the purpose of this? Yeah, X Men Red is Jean Grey's team, which will have her X twenty three, some other characters. I'm just and I'm I'm just disappointed by it because it's like no, please stop. Like Marvel. Okay, here's the thing. If you have a specific sub franchise within your franchise. Or a sub series within your vast universe. Stick, just stick to just three, or no? It's no. it's insane. And you have uh, you have, you have X Force with Cable, Cable's book X Force, and then you this have is, uh, then you have Weapon was, X. This is what was off putting about the X Men in the first place. Right, it's bringing it all back. But the sad part is, Sony's books are really really well written, but as a consumer, it's just too much. Domas, Domas, man, it's too much stuff. It's like just stick with the main series and two sub series. Then that's fine. Or we don't even. It's, it's just over the top and insane. And I feel like it's gonna happen again for X Men, and that's just my fear. But I feel like I said I personally, um, a lot of people talk big, big things about Blusky. I have seen people talk about him like he's great, he's this and that, and he's effective immediately. So I think we'll see in his first news conference sometime after Thanksgiving, and he could discuss, and we could discuss. Um, how that looks, and I'm, I'm some like I said, I'm not, I'm super excited um, that someone will be taking on the ranking because, as you pointed out, too much. This is a, it's a mess. All this diversity is a mess, and some people argue, uh, as Jules, as you, you may be a fan of the guy, but he does have a point. The guy from Diversity in Comics saying that why create uh, this person as this character title, just make a new character, and that's something I kind of agree with, like. In, in a sense, for like uh, the new Iron Man, it's still called Iron. The book is still called Iron Man, and she's called Ironheart. Just call the book Ironheart. It's just make it easier. She's a new character. Treat it as such. Uh, I agree with that sentiment. Everything else is, you know, negligible. I mean, just yeah. Uh, there are a few things that you know, obviously, they'll keep because you know people are liking it so far. Yeah. But you know, streamline it, you know, a bit more. Yeah. No. I also hope that he brings in new talent to Marvel. I think that uh, as as much as people may not like this, I like the fact that there are new young writers and artists at Marvel books. And one about one of the recommendations we'll be talking about later today that I recommend comes from a new writer people I never heard of before and had liked the book. So I think that the fact that Marvel's taking risk with like because I think you may where they sign Anthony Cates, the guy who wrote an image Rednecks in God Country, he's fairly new to the industry and they signed him. They're taking risk for a new guy to you know, shape their universe the way it is. And I think that's a good thing. And I'm very, very excited for that from Marvel. And I hope uh, Belusky, with his amazing talent and his veteran skills, decide to keep that trend going because it it makes me much more. Some new kid or some guy has a new idea for it and they could just take it to Marvel. Marvel will believe in you. And not... Yeah, it's... I really do agree that, you know, hopefully he will bring in new talent. Like, if it wasn't, you know... Uh, we wouldn't have gotten uh, G. Willow Wilson or many others without you know, Alonzo. Yeah, without Alonzo. So you don't have to fire anyone. No, I, I hope that to... doesn't happen. <laughs> I, you, could you, you imagine? He's like, oh, I'm, um, all you guys get the, get the f out, get out now. We get only, only good writers, not you young punks. Get out. <laughs> oh dear God, I hope it's not going to be like we don't know enough about this man, and then he turns. Oh gosh, don't let him be like the Trump of comic books. No. No, I don't think so. He's been in Asia, so yeah. Oh, there's another thing I had a theory because he's he's been in the Asian market. He might bring over a lot more uh, Japanese artists to the manga scene. I think 
uh, to not to the manga oh. scene, to the comic book scene. Sorry. Um, like I think you may see some variants, recent variants at Marvel done by Japanese artists look really good. That might be a, that might be a thing. DC, you're gonna have a rough time. You thought your Chinese Superman was gonna do anything? <laughs> <laughs> you will beat you Japanese without we'll hamagras. <laughs> Heck, we're even going to beat you with the Koreans. Like, we have the awesome Hulk right now. Oh, that's true. Oh, man, it's crazy. Man, but I f- yeah. It, yeah. That, that... Huh, we're actually going to have a... No, no, I'm not going to have a measuring Asian con- invasion? <laughs> actually, I would like that. As an Asian person... Okay, like, the, the lowest of Asian people. But... Hey, hey, you're still Asian, man. Just like me. I'm, ha- I'm partial. Feel... That's all right. I'm Filipino. We're the Mexicans of Asia. Eh... No, we really are. We use pesos. I know you. I know, but still, it's it's cool, bro. I mean, you're. But I, I still like the idea. You know, they're more being more Asian writers over at DC. It, it's. I mean, uh, Marvel. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. There are there are some Asian people at Marvel. I mean, DC. I think it's Dexter Soy is the only one, and Gene Lu Wong, the only two people I can think of right now. Yeah, but so the double B, you know, just. You don't have to fire anyone. You don't have to flush it, these ideas down the toilet. Just streamline it. Right. I know. think that's what. And I also, like I said, I don't know what he's going to bring to the table, but I'm, I, I said I have some hope. Depending on his next initiative, I think because Alonzo has been let go effective immediately, we don't know what Alonzo's going to do. Most likely, give you guys a heads up. Alonzo probably signed a non a non competition clause, so he won't probably find a new job elsewhere for like some time next year. Which is sad, but it makes eh. sense. I mean, he's he was way deep into working as a Marvel. If he finds another job elsewhere, he'd be use all that expertise and everything so quickly. He can, like, let's just say he get like if they let go of Marvel and he decides to go work, and, you know, and boom, he uses all his Marvel expertise oh, he learned, yeah. all his Marvel expertise at boom, boom, be like a big publisher. You know, that'd be too great. That'd be completely unadventurous. It'd be crazy. I could totally see that. Boom is well, it's booming right now. Yes, so. they're doing pretty well. Huh. Alfon- uh, Alonso, we're giving you ideas. We're giving you what? ideas. Or what if you go Dark is? Horse, I heard a lot of people been, a lot of people want to work at Dark Horse nowadays. That'd be a- uh, okay. So, to our recommend, speaking of good ideas, onto our recommendations. Yes, onto our recommendations. So, as I discussed earlier about new people working at Marvel right now. One of the books I recommend is Jim and Volume 1. It's done by uh, Christina Strain, who's brand new to the industry. Uh, she was a colorist for a while, and now she's writing, and I like I like her interpretation of Generation X books. Uh, my only complaint, the book might be a little too fast-paced in some things, but I do feel the genuine emotion for some of the characters. Uh, I like Nature Girl a lot more than I thought I would, and I think it's pretty good. Oh, and it has, it has Terry Dawson covers. The Dawson's. I always love the Dawson's art. <laughs> okay, so for my recommendation, uh, it is uh, Jason. We mentioned Jason Aaron uh, a little bit here, and uh, I thought, you know, like, I love, I, I really do like Jason uh, Aaron's uh, unconventional way of writing, in a sense. Um, and my first exposure to Jason Aaron was... Uh, was his uh, work on Thor, God of Thunder, Volume One and Two, God the God Butcher and God Bomb. It's and when I mean unconventional, uh, Thor, God of Thunder, basically, it it it's like a three person perspective in terms of in terms of storytelling. Like you have Thor in the past, Thor in the present, and Thor in the future, and that was very interesting to me. And while Thor is trying to figure out you know, how to deal with this so-called current god problem. killer. Yeah. yeah, this current problem, the god killer. I mean, it's right there, and it's right there in the title, like, the god butcher. Yeah. And, and, um, the antagonist Gore, his motivations, like, wow, this is perfect motivation for a villain who has beef with a god. Exactly, and it's just, it's just well done. And the fact is that it bothers me in some sense that some of the people who read this run have beef with his current run of Thor, with you know Jane Foster Thor, then you know, Goddess of Thunder, Mighty Thor, it's like how how could he do this? Like it's the same. He's still using those elements. There's stories of him talking about Thor in the past and Thor currently, what's happening, and it shows you that everything's a. I don't understand. It. I feel like I, I feel like people like just turned it off 
for the wrong reasons. And I feel like that was a very bad reason. It's like, well, this is, again, like, we mentioned this before recording, but um, this is the same fandom that will turn away from Dan Slott's Superior Spider-Man thinking that Spider, that, that, that Peter was never coming back. Like, you know that he's going to bring him back, even if it seemed like, oh, Doc Ox, the new Spider-Man now. Like, but it was no, an interesting story. In my opinion, interesting it would story. hurt me a lot if James Ross is not Thor or Thor comes back somehow. But I could live in a universe with two Thors. Yeah. And also, if the Thor movie taught us anything, okay, slight spoiler, you know. No, no, no. It's, you know... It, Thor, you know, it's not just his hammer that makes the character, you know, it's... It's his name. You know, and it's the person wielding the hammer, you know, you know, the whole worthy thing, you know? You know? <laughs> He's still the god of thunder, in a sense. Even in the, even if in the book he doesn't use his lightning powers as, you know... But, it, uh, yeah, the, the god butcher and, uh, the the god bomb it's really good uh the artwork by uh how do i pronounce his name Esad Rybik Esad Rybik it's it's very enthusiastic there's a lot of uh, digital enhancement here but it's it's a it's it's got a like a lot of warrior flair and the colorist Dean White really helps set the ambiance of the book whether the story is taking place on medieval Earth, beyond the stars, or a fantasy, sci-fi, fiction, mixed future kind of thing. And when it really wants to be a little gory, then yeah. Especially considering that we're dealing with a god killer. <laughs> exactly. And uh, it's, just a really, it's a really good uh, series for Thor. If you guys read that art, please continue with the rest of the story. It explains everything. And it's it still has the same um, it still has the same mysticism even when Jane Foster becomes Thor and he explains how it happens. And he, the worst part is Jane doesn't even play a huge role. It's more about the War of the Realms, and they talk about the coolest mythos ever. What is Mihor? What is the what is the magic hammer? It's, it's when you guys figure out it's cool. So yeah, guys, like. If if uh, Thor, God of Thunder, was any indication, you know, we see the future, and you know, Thor's still the God of Thunder. It's just that he's he's the only God left in Asgard, apparently, in the future, and all of them are dead. Yeah, which is super. I said super awesome time travel stuff. Just totally recommend that run. And uh, speaking of runs, to recommend that deals with weird science fiction. Uh, I recommend Warren Ellis's latest book. Uh, for DC, he, the Wild Storm, the trades come out, and uh, yeah, just it's just really good. It incorporates all elements of the Wild Storm universe. You have elements of the Authority, you have elements of Stormwatch, which in this version is called Skywatch. It's the only spoiler I'm giving. You have elements of Wildcat. It's just really amazing how he just puts it all together, and it feels like it's worth reading and worth continuing. It's just really good. It's it's it. it for someone who grew up reading most of those comics, seeing it all fused together in one somewhat universe is really great. And it's a spy series. It's a science fiction spy series. I totally recommend it. Especially nowadays, we don't have, uh, I want to say in the industry, a lot of top tier ongoing spy series. We have a lot of limited series that are, that are like in the spy spectrum because, you know, I that's guess how it is. like by S. In a way, like spy esque, yeah. May, maybe you could say Nightwing is spy esque. Nightwing? No, you mean Grayson. Grayson was oh, spy, Grayson. but that's yeah, Grayson. Yeah. I did not care for Grayson. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm reading. I'm reading this. I'm reading. I'm, I'm reading the story of Dick Grayson's Nightwing. I'm sorry. It's just no. I, it's like I didn't. Bother yeah, with trust it. me. You were not the only one, and uh, this was a decision made by Mister Dio, So whatever. It's like I don't care if he's having flirty moments with with Midnighter. It's like, even though this is probably gonna make me want to search for fan art now, but f f fuck no, hey, no, no. no your family gonna... stream. You could do you could do Rule Thirty Four. Twenty minutes later. Oh God, I just I went. <laughs> oh man, managers gonna talk to me about this again. Oh man, management. Oh boy. Remember, this just forget what kind of. Eh. Yeah, we're uh, so fired. 
but oh come on it's not like anyone's gonna dig that deep um actually maybe they will but hey. but anyway um yeah so wildstorm it's I don't know. It's just I even with the authority, I wasn't that big into Wildstorm, and even really? once it was in, not as much. I mean, it's just I guess at the time I really wasn't into, you know, like a like this was me during the new fifty. This was me like I only got early two thousands. Yeah, it's just I wasn't really big into the whole. You know, superheroes acting like dicks, and you know, and um, not, not I don't know. I kind of, to me, I kind of not like. I kind of like that era in the sense because it made it more realistic. It was, it was, it had that nice blend of realism slash the grunginess of the '90s. That and it kind of made the heroes think about like, am I really kind of a jerk and posing my will on people? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay, but, I have to admit that uh, you know it. It, they, it wasn't as bad as the '90s. Yeah, but wasn't as bad. It wasn't as bad, but uh, yeah, that to me that that era of comics was cool for me because you know, the authority was like a sneak preview of what the ultimate comics were. You know, the ultimates by okay, you know, yeah, Mark Millar and Brian so, Hitch. Okay, I have to admit, I would rather take the authority over the ultimate universe over the ultimate universe. Well, the ultimates, that particular, the ultimate Avengers, if you want. The make, ultimates, so. it's yeah, the ultimates, like frack that no. Heck no. It's just, I, I would, yeah, I would rather read The Authority. But, you know, it's just, coming off of the Ultimate Universe and the Ultimates and, you know, after just getting off of the 90s, it just, the, the, the Wildstorm Universe didn't interest me that much. And, you know, this was during the Golden Age of DC, you know, where, you know, Young Justice was coming out and also, you know, Mark, Mark Wade and uh, Grant Morrison and Warren Ellis, you know, Jeff Johns, yeah, the golden, yeah, the very nice era, yeah, before it, Dan Dio got moved up, but that's uh, a whole different argument. <laughs> <laughs> the day where the day that that the time where DC decided to become super edgy, but what? Well, well, that's another that's another video. But anyway, uh, speaking of wait. Speaking of DC, uh, my my recommendation, my last recommendation, well, my second and last recommendation is uh, like uh, Aquaman by Jeff Johns, and oh my gosh, the artist's name escapes me. Uh, to, to the Google Aquaman machine. run. Yeah, in two thousand eleven. Among oh, among among the DC books that didn't suck. I'm well, like I said, whatever that. Jeff Johns, whatever Jeff Johns touch was. Pretty Pretty much golden. That's why he's the. I'm not counting Justice League. Can't make me. The thing was, no. The moment Green Lantern I think, mentioned, was it Ivan Rice? Was it New Fifty Two? Was it New Fifty Two? Yeah, the New Fifty Two, 2011 Aquaman, and the art was, uh, yes, it was by Ivan Rice. Yeah, Ivan Rice. But... Yeah, because. The sad part is like you know how I remember that is because uh, I actually while while we were talking I actually pulled out my Jeff Johns collection and I was like wait a second this is it yeah this is Ivan Rice it's totally Ivan Rice it's like it was one of the only few things that DC got right at the time it's like okay how do we make Aquaman awesome but we don't want to rely on the grizzled hook hand thing because as cool as that was. It was also at the same time trying too hard. Like, how do we play Aquaman, Arthur Curry, straightforward and reintroduce him to a new audience and prove that he is not lame? Just, just debunk all of the criticisms leveled against him. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt that Robot Chicken spent a lot of time ripping on him. Yeah, but this Jeff Johns is like, wow, in one comic, in just a few pages. Debunks everything. It's like, oh, why is Aquaman eating fish? I thought it was cannibalism or something. Like, aren't fish your friends? Or, like, don't you talk to fish? Or, well, Aquaman's useless on land. He just stopped an armed robbery. And the guy tried to shoot him in the face and it didn't work. 
like yeah he's not really that useless on, on land like he's just as strong and his skin is durable and you know he does have a pitchfork as a weapon and also his relationship with Mir is oh, it's 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 so it's such a loving supportive relationship and she really does support his decision to you know leave Atlantis and you know pursue a normal life on land I, I really like that I really like that like let's have a superhero try to pursue a, a somewhat normal life and also the artwork like it's i i guess it's kind of subpar but at the same time it's expressive it's it's en- it's energetic and also there's one scene in the first issue where a little kid tells aquaman like you're my favorite superhero now like ah and they're mir and, and arthur just smiling at this kid's like oh this yeah th- th- this va why couldn't the rest of the new fifty two been like this? I think it's because uh, not to get off topic. The problem with the new fifty two is that which I had the same problem with Rebirth, this is my fear, is that because Aquaman not Aquaman, because Jeff Johns led it, he led these projects, no one else had the idea to fit all but finish it because he led a lot of the new fifty two charge and then no one else could ever finish it. Like it's Justice League run. After he left Justice League and Justice America, just those books flopped. After he left Aquaman, the book just didn't really recover. Same thing with uh, etc. So yeah, I feel I like to, I have to say that too. It's like once he left Aquaman, it wasn't as entertaining anymore. Right. So that's my current. That's my current thing. I feel I don't think the same thing happened in this case for Rebirth. Because uh, there was more communication. Exactly. There was more communication, and they had a bigger pool of writers who were able to kind of spread the Rebirth idea. Well, so the theme of Rebirth novel in the. Uh, they're in their line, and they so knocked, and they knocked off all the edge lord boys club mentality. Oh yeah, it's just it's just yeah, they're totally different books. So like night and day. Save, save for dark nights. Okay, yeah. DC, you've been good for a year. You can be edge lord this once. And it, it well, it's selling well. Metal days and dark nights. It's just selling really well. So I guess I feel like it's a section of people who always love that stuff. But at the same time, it should never dominate your books. Like. I love Michael Allred to the day I die. I think he's one of my favorite comic book creators. I love his art. I love the stories he tells. But there is no way they're going to make an entire line for a Michael Allred. <laughs> it's like, I even like Neil Gaiman and, Je- and Jeff Lemire, but do I want everything to be Neil Gaiman and Jeff Lemire? Not really. Yeah, Otherwise, cause... we're going we're gonna to have, like, mutated children or something. Or, <laughs> oh, or, 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 or spaghetti-faced animals or something. Yeah, I actually pictured a nightmare how I look like Sandman into your Sandman into your Sandman is your Sandman. Oh, oh. I'm getting Lord of the Flies flashbacks now. Pretty much. Yeah, I wouldn't want everything to be like that. No. But, yeah, DC's been nice so far. It's like, we'll give you this one. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. I have to censor myself now. Yeah, don't yeah, don't talk it up. Anyway guys, thanks for listening to our new podcast. Thank you so much and please and uh finally DC you finally learned. Well Yeah, you've been finally learned. learned. So and far. if you guys didn't check it out, a little tidbit, uh, as there if you check uh, October two thousand seventeen numbers, uh D C may not have may have not been in Marvel in the top sale department, but out of the top ten books, they made at least seven of it. So you know, and that's also probably another reason why uh, Marvel they change in Marvel. But anyway, so DC is coming up. Things are going well. And uh, again, thanks for listening to our podcast. Please be sure to support us and follow us on various social medias. Be sure to follow and support Jules Chan on Patreon, so you can you know edit the podcast faster and pay me not in churros anymore. But the- when did I ever pay you in churros? <laughs> Man, you're delirious. None for you tonight. And all right, so if you guys don't hear from me, if you see like a, a you know a six foot uh, black kid, black Asian guy passed out from malnutrition, just just call cops on Jules, please, if you can. <laughs> uh, oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're getting the whip tonight. And I'll see. All right, so that that's the end of my life. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again. See you guys. I gotta go teach Matt a lesson. God damn it. Alright, see you guys.